Hey, what's up, guys? It's Quincy Carrier here. And on Wednesdays, I like to usually do a film review, film breakdown. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at some of what the Browns are doing well, what their young players are doing well. And I think there's a lot of promise to be gleamed out of this performance that the Browns had on Sunday, even though it wasn't necessarily the prettiest game. But before I get into that today, I have to give the shout out to the Patreon members, everybody who has followed, but especially the Dog Check members and the dog checks start out with Michael Matik, Greg Ehler, Seth Harrison, Corporal Nick Lopez, Nick Nasty, James Nemo, Mac House, Reeve Herps, Justin Cole, Philip Wilcoxon, Marie Vibbert, Timmy McClure, Keith Anderson, Joshua Still, Sean Barron, Goggles Pisano, Dom Gazzulo, Ian Whitaker, Colin 216, Anthony Latham, Christian, Matt Bond, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, Stole Train, Charles Work, Dan in West Texas, Billy, Michael Hodenak, Jared Austin, Moose Gentry, Patrick F. Austin, Mark Burnett, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, IT Rex, Austin Bolin, Jesus Serrano, Chris Foams. Ethan Rindauer, Buds Roland, Masayua, the Picktown Browns backers, Mark Khan, Max Aldojo, and CK. I want to continue to thank those who have donated via PayPal, who continue to donate through PayPal, and also the people who have donated via Patreon. All of those things are so, so important right now as the financial situation of my channel is still very uncertain, unfortunately. But without further ado, Dog Check! All right, now let me get into the bad cage. Yo, what's up down here in the back cave? Ready to look at this all 22 footage. Um, it's a lot of interesting stuff to look at real quick. Just a quick reminder, this channel is being fueled 100% right now off of Patreon subscriptions and PayPal donations. So if you want to help keep this channel afloat, um, please subscribe to the Patreon or drop a one-time donation via PayPal. Or you can get some merch. I got that new Bot Squad merch on Teespring up right now. Link is in the description. Also, it should be up on the merch shelf below this video so check that out again any way you want to support is dope to me um again thank you guys but let's get into this footage browns versus the houston texans and i want to talk about some very fundamental things that i think the browns are improving and why there's a lot of good things to look forward to um as the season continues to go on and why i think the browns are going to get better as the season goes on um, and it starts with just the basic fundamental stuff so we're going to start here with a play from Nick Chubb that kind of shows you why there is a difference um, when Nick Chubb's out there versus anybody else um, that the Browns have. Even though the Browns have very good running backs behind Nick Chubb, there's something about Nick Chubb that makes him just a little bit more special. And we're going to see that right here in this small little play. The Browns are going to snap the ball, let it play through. And boom, there it is. This is why Nick Chubb is special. And why he is special is his vision. His vision is incredible. All right. Because this play, you know, I think the first read Nick Chubb's supposed to make is here. Right. Is that there? He decides it's not for two reasons. Two very good reasons. This is why Nick Chubb is very good. Because most running backs would have taken that there and gotten swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. And I wouldn't have faulted them for it because this almost looks like it's there but there are two things that are wrong with this picture one jack conklin's booty is facing the wrong way right zone running you know you want butt to butt that butt is going the wrong way i don't know how he ended up in this predicament here but that that that's not good there also something that nick chubb saw pre-snap i think also factored into this decision here because nick chubb i think he has his eye on this guy. This guy's just chilling out here. Real close to the line of scrimmage for a DB. Nick Chubb's wondering what's going on here. And then he gets a answer, right? Oh, you're shooting up. So you're trying to shoot the outside. You know, maybe it's a DB blitz. Maybe it's something like that. It's poorly executed because he ends up running into J.J. Watt here. Um, as, as Jedrick Wills lets him release um, backside here. But Nick Chubb sees that. And now he knows, cool, if I need to, I can cut back and hit that area. It's going to be wide open. And Nick Chubb hits his cutback like nobody else in football. Boom, cut, 
explosive. Reminds me of watching like Zeke Elliott in college. Um, just the explosiveness off that quick step here. Boom. And he gets something out of nothing here, right? Because that wouldn't have been anything, but he made it happen. And that's why Nick Chubb is one of the best running backs in football. His vision really does put him apart from most other people here. Again, the vision is tremendous by Nick Chubb. These are the plays that you miss when you don't have Nick Chubb, right? These kind of get him out of nothing, momentum, get him out of nowhere kind of plays. This is what you miss when you don't have Nick Chubb. And that's why it's so important to have him. And as he gets healthier, as he shakes off some of that rust, ooh, it's going to get dangerous out there for a lot of teams. Now, a lot of you guys who watch this channel know that I have been praising Baker Mayfield as of late. Um, I feel like he's played much better since the second quarter of the Cincinnati game. And one of those areas I think he has improved in. And I think he's shown improvement even in the games he played bad, you know, Indy and Pittsburgh. I thought he showed improvement in this area. And it, it, can see, it continues to show some refinement in this area is his pocket awareness and his footwork in the pocket. And there are several plays I'm going to show you today that really – Put that point home through here. All right, so this is just the end zone view. You're going to see Baker maneuver the pocket here. And this is just good stuff. Rashard Higgins doesn't catch that ball, but he does draw the flag. So it's almost as good as just not as getting the ball completed there. But again, this is what you want to see from Baker Mayfield. Play action, good feet. Pocket gets a little bit messy. Not a, not a dirty pocket necessarily, but he's getting rushed a little bit, right? J.J. Watts coming up in his face. Um, and Old Baker would have either curled up or tried to run out of this situation and not make a throw. But New Baker, he sees that, he feels it, he steps up, and he makes a throw with guys around his feet, pocket coming in close to him, found a way to find his throw, find his window as well. Look at that, because you can see in between uh, 75 and Jedrick, there's a little bit of a window for that throw. And he throws that ball there. And it's a little high, but it's certainly within Richard Higgins. Richard Higgins can catch that. He just didn't. Um, hits his hand there. And that's a good play for Baker. That's a good play. That's good pocket awareness. That's good development for Baker in that area. Um, this is another play where I feel like Baker showed some good pocket awareness here. Right? Play action. Stepping up. And boom. Boom. Now, what he does here, right, and I didn't get the other angle. I apologize for that. But what he does here is do something that I've been complaining about Baker Mayfield explicitly not doing, which is finding his passing windows. How many times have you heard me complain about Baker not finding passing windows? This is the most natural I've seen him find a passing window where he gets to the top of his drop. He reads one. Not there. Austin Hooper. Not there. The guy coming across, covered. Okay, let me get it to my check down. And when he decides to go to his check down, he sees this whole situation going on here. I'll try to highlight it for you guys. This whole situation going on right here. Now, what does that situation mean? Well, it means that Baker Mayfield, he's not going to be able to throw that ball from the top of his drop. Because if he throws that to Kareem Hunt, who is over here, that's going to get batted down. Baker knows that story too well. So what does he do? He smartly slides up, gets that guy out of his way, throws a clean pass to Kareem Hunt, gets some positive yards. That's the small stuff, but it makes such a big difference, I promise you. It's the small stuff. It makes such a big difference, though. Right? That little step up gets that guy out the way, frees up a window, and you're able to get the ball out of your hands instead of hold on to it too long or force the ball downfield and throw a bad interception in the red zone. All right, now we're going to show love as I always try to do whenever I do some of these film breakdowns, is just show love to Miles Garrett. Just being absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so ridiculous. Look at this. By the way, that's not some schmuck out there at left tackle for uh, Houston. That's that's Laramie Tunsil. That's a really good tackle. That's a top 10 NFL. One of the most athletic tackles in the league. Um, just... Just getting euroed by by Miles Garrett. This is just look at this footwork and then look at the quick hands here, right? And then the most impressive thing is the bend. So Miles gets him up here, gets keep your hands off me, keep your hands off me, and then right here, he just feels that that change of weight for Laramie. 
and he knows I can just dip underneath you and put you where I want you. And this is these are the bad things that happen to teams that are audacious enough to leave Miles Garrett one on one with their good tackle, right? Because a lot of teams who have good tackles, they'll try to do this, and this is what happens. So I think Miles Garrett had two tackle. He had a sack and a tackle for loss back to back. I think Houston learned real quick: you double team or triple team Miles. You do not leave him on an island, no matter how good your tackle is, because this is what happens. Look at the dip. Look at the dip. That doesn't happen to Laramie Tunsil often. <laughs> and then he gets a sack on Deshaun Watson. That's that's just Miles Garrett. If I don't ever want to hear anybody question whether Miles Garrett's worth the money ever again. I don't want to hear that. All right, so this next play is from Ronnie Harrison. Um, this is a good thing that Ronnie Harrison does. You'll notice in a lot of these plays, Ronnie Harrison is in the box. Now, that's probably due to the ridiculous amount of wind that the Browns had at the stadium that day. I don't expect them to just sit in the box all game like this. Um, but, you know, if if this turns into good things for a defense, you might see it more often. But Ronnie Harrison, he's going to drop out. And he's supposed to be, you know, off the numbers right here, right? He's, he's right where he needs to be. This is the coverage. They're going to kind of give up things underneath. But this is such a good play from Ronnie Harrison because this just isn't supposed to happen, right? Deshaun, he sees Ronnie Harrison's all the way back here, worried about the deeper flat. You know, he's protecting the numbers, trying not to let anybody score. And Deshaun says, hey, cool, I'm going to dump it off to my running back, get this first down real quick. And you can see where that room is, right? Ronnie Harrison is here. This guy is here. And there is like one Texan here that can probably, you know, try to chip or do something to help that guy spring free. So you got options. If, if you're the Houston Texans here, this is a advantageous play for you. But look what Ronnie Harrison does. That's tremendous. That's tremendous right there. You know, I, I talked a lot about Ronnie Harrison's 40 time. He plays a lot faster than he runs in shorts. I promise you that. Um, that's one thing I've learned by watching him because he closes in on this play incredibly fast. This is this should be like a five to yard play to a first down. He comes down on it before he even gets to the five, you know, the 15. Um, you know, he he. this is good play and even better tackle. That's a really good play by Ronnie Harrison. Um, and that's why Ronnie Harrison is more effective than Carl Joseph because Carl Joseph wasn't closing in that fast and making these kind of plays. Um, so Ronnie Harrison, got to tip my hat off to him. He's been playing well. Um, this next play is a Baker play. So Baker, again, doing good things from the pocket here. I, I love it when I see Baker Mayfield do good things from the pocket. Um, I love it when I see his footwork and his pocket behaviors get better and more disciplined and this is a trend now this has been going on for the last three four weeks um with baker mayfield when it comes to him breaking some bad habits in the pocket so i, I think this is here to stay baker gets to the top of this drop and again you notice nothing's there what has baker not done in a while start to roll right or roll left when there's a clean pocket baker notices hey he, he's not in danger steps up looks for something straightforward stays in that pocket so he's not away from any of these routes because that's the biggest problem when he breaks the pocket is that he runs away from the play design so he steps up and you know if he sprints up forward here that's fine but he runs up stays in the middle of the field where all the plays are where he still has all the routes available to him and you know if he were Patrick Mahomes this is something Patrick Mahomes could do is he could hit a uh, Kadero Hodge right here from the run now Baker ain't Baker ain't Patrick Mahomes. He's not going to do that, even though Patrick Mahomes would do that very easily. What Baker's going to do is something a little bit, you know, safer and a little bit more reasonable for a human being, which is try to hit this window right here because he has a wide open man here that can run those yards for him so he doesn't have to. And that's exactly what Baker does. And that's a great play by Baker Mayfield right here. Let me let it play. Just good stuff. From Baker Mayfield. Now again, Patrick Mahomes might have made that throw. Baker ain't making that throw. No other human being is making that throw. Um, but this is good stuff, man. I, I I've been complaining about this for Baker Mayfield for a while. A lot of people have complained about this with Baker Mayfield for a while. And it's just nice to see these habits just start to go away. He's just like slowly washing 2019 away. This is just smart pocket work. Boom, throws it there on target. Good play. Good play by Baker. In the win. Good play. 
This is another play of Baker Mayfield in the pocket here. And, you know, he gets the top of his drop. And it's just fundamental stuff. Stepping up, stepping side, boom. Beautiful throw to Rashard Higgins right there. And, again, not panicking. Old Baker would have saw TJ. Well, not TJ. That's another problem. J.J. Watt running towards him and would have either tried to just immediately tuck it and run it or he would have ran towards that 20 marker, right? Towards right here. This is where he would have did that whole roll and then throw out of bounds or throw of interception. We've seen this happen a thousand times before with Baker Mayfield. It, 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 it was a consistent problem in 2019. But now, what do we see Baker doing? Stuff Russell Wilson does, right? The step up, step up and around and find somebody in a window. And man, that's a good window to find somebody in, right? Let's look at this window that he throws that into, right? Guy here, guy here, window is right here on the run. That's very tough. And keep in mind, the wind is blowing at 40 miles per hour like that way. Like that is a impressive throw to make. With the wind, not at your back. Nobody had the wind advantage today um, or against in that game. So impressive, impressive stuff from Baker Mayfield here. This is why Baker Mayfield's the number one overall pick. Now, does he do this every play? No. Would I like to see him do this every play? Yes, because he is the number one overall pick. But this is, these, this is the stuff that justifies it, right? If he can make plays like this on a consistent basis – He'll look like the number one overall pick, and you won't have to worry about, you know, oh, well, Josh Allen doing this, and Lamar Jackson did this, because Lamar would be, I mean, not Lamar, but Baker would be doing stuff like this. We just need to see it out of him more consistently, and maybe if he stays in this offense for a longer period of time, you're going to see things like this. The signs are definitely there, and again, look at the pocket footwork. TJ Watt is barreling in on this play, right? Boom. Gets the better of Jack Conklin immediately. He's taking Jack Conklin wherever he wants to go. Baker sees Jack's in trouble. He does not panic. Old Baker would have panicked. Instead, calmly just steps up. Hey, my other guy's got this, though, so I can just get rid of this. Roll out and make a beautiful play to Richard Higgins. That's just, I'm excited. I'm getting excited just seeing it again. Um, and then this play is just the beauty of Nick Chubb, right? This is the touchdown. This is Nick Chubb doing what Nick Chubb does best, which is cutting back. And this, I think this is more of a design, right? Cutting back and just being Nick Chubb. Just the acceleration, so hard to tackle. This guy misses him. Just Nick Chubb. How many times have we seen Nick Chubb score on a cutback like that in the red zone? You know, it, it, the teams know it's coming. They have to know it's coming. It's just that's what Nick Chubb does that nobody can stop is that cutback. His vision is immaculate. Look at What are you going to do? J.J. Watt can't do nothing there. You know what I mean? Like that's Nick Chubb. That's that's Nick Chubb right there. All right, but that's all the film that I got for today. Again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day and have a good night.